At the beginning of the EVA, EV1 will egress first, and he'll be passed a bag from EV2, and then EV2 will egress. EV1 is headed to the forward side of the vehicle. He'll first pick up his ingress aid, translate on the starboard side of the US lab, and out to the pressurized mating adapter number three, where he'll drop off his ingress aid and the bag, and then he'll move his foot restraint to a new interface. Meanwhile, EV2 will translate up on the truss to retrieve his foot restraint and ingress aid. He'll be joining EV1 on the forward part of the vehicle and set up his foot restraint on the forward part of PMA3. At this point, both crew members will attach tethers between IDA3 and PMA3. EV1 will then retrieve the portable wireless camera, install it on PMA2 for a great forward view of the work site. He'll then return to the PMA3 and ingress the foot restraint. At this point, both crew members will be routing and installing cables. EV1 will be working from the foot restraint while EV2 performs the routing. These first two cables that are connected will supply the ready to hook sensor data that allows us to know that we have a flush and good contact mate between PMA3 and IDA3. A third cable is routed. This is the IDA3 heater power cable. It will be plugged in later on in the EVA. After working the aft part of the interface, the crew members will switch roles for the forward panel. EV2 will ingress the foot restraint and EV1 will route the cables. These two cables allow us to power and have data to the hooks that will drive between PMA3 and IDA3. At this point, the crew members will go quiescent and will actually drive the hooks between the two modules. Once the hooks are driven, we have a sound structural mate between the two modules. The crew members will then begin routing additional cables. These cables will now activate the zenith portion of IDA, making IDA3 accessible to future visiting vehicles. The cables that are being routed during this EVA were brought outside on a previous EVA almost five years ago. They have baked in the sun and had UV and AO exposure, so we expect them to be very difficult to manipulate and route. And this is mostly due to the fact that they'll be stiff and want to retain the coiled shape. After we complete the routing on the forward side, you see that they switch rolls again and route additional cables on the aft side. The crew members have then completed all of their cable routing operations for IDA3. At this point, EV1 will take a few closeout photos, grab the portable wireless camera, and install it into the bag. EV1 will then pick up the APFR, the foot restraint that is, and return towards the airlock. He'll then install the foot restraint into another interface. EV2 will then take some closeout photos of the work site and begin with some outfitting tasks. This includes removing and installing some multi-layer insulation. The Zenith MLI portion of IDA will be taken off, removed, and installed into the bag and two Hemi reflectors will be installed onto the IDA. This footage shows EV1 in his foot restraint actually manipulating some cables in our training facility, the Neutral Buoyancy Laboratory. 
Prior to flight, crew members spend about nine hours at the Neutral Buoyancy Laboratory times nine different test events to help them train in a very appropriate flight-like environment. This footage shows EB2 routing one of the cables on the port side of the lab towards the aft panel. The MBL is so large that we can fit full-size mock-ups of the International Space Station inside. And the crew members get to perform a dress rehearsal of the actual EBA prior to flight. After the IDA install task, EV-1 will then ingress the S-0 truss. He'll perform operations of routing a booty around one of the connectors and installing a truss jumper for redundancy of the robotic arm. The next couple of tasks involve expanding our external wireless communication systems. And it involves routing a few legs one to the aft side of the U.S. lab, and the other on the forward side, forward zenith side of the U.S. laboratory. EV2, meanwhile, will pick up his foot restraint and return it to the starboard CETA cart. He'll then move over to the port CETA cart and install a wire tie between the foot restraint and the ingress aid for a future EVA. Lastly, he'll pick up the bag that was left at the ID8 worksite and return to the airlock, where he'll meet EV1. At the end of the EVA, they'll pass in the bag and both crew members will ingress.